Dr. Keller is now going to tell you about a different approach to stem cells. You just heard about the, uh, taking the adult stem cells from the pancreas, and Dr. Keller is best known for his work uh, using embryonic stem cells. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm going to use a few slides as props. Um, I think it's brutally unfair to tell people when I got my PhD. Uh, it dates me. But uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, I'm going to follow up on Derek's comments uh, just with a few slides, uh, sharing with you the excitement of embryonic stem cells and a new, totally new type of stem cell called induced pluripotential stem cell. These, this work is recent. It's within the last two years, uh, at least the induced pluripotential stem cells, and it's revolutionizing stem cell biology. So I hope I can convey the excitement that the community has for the work that's going on. So the goal would be to take a cell in a dish and create large numbers of functional insulin-producing cells for transplantation, for drug discovery, and so forth. And so how do we do this, and what are we talking about? So Derek spoke to you about the stem cells within the adult body, and I'm going to talk to you about what, a class of stem cells that's now known as pluripotent stem cells, and it encompasses two types, the embryonic stem cells and the induced pluripotent stem cells. I'm going to tell you what they are. Derek's already touched upon embryonic stem cells. These ha uh, are well known, I'm sure, to the community Probably the individual that really brought them to light is George Bush in his resistance to uh, funding any, any of the newer versions of these. But I think the excitement, I was just in the States yesterday, and you can tell the excitement in the scientific community is there that uh, uh, Barack Obama is going to immediately reverse the, the rules on human ES. That's not to say you can do whatever you want, but we can use cells that were made since uh, August of uh, 2001. That being said, the, the, the issue here is these cells are made from early uh, fertilized eggs, and they, they have several hallmarks. And Derek's already discussed them. One is, under certain conditions, they'll grow forever. Under other conditions, we can make any cell type in the body. And this kind of highlights it, and it's absolutely true. On that side, we have conditions. We could fill this room with embryonic stem cells if we had the resources. We know how to do that. And we know how to make some of these cell types on this side of the slide. So if you were to design a stem cell, a dream stem cell, in essence, this is it. We can, we can control its growth, and we're getting very good at controlling what it makes. And so, this is some of the, these are some of the cells we make in our lab. Uh, some of them more or less for fun, others we have serious projects on. But a single lab, the technologies are now available to make a broad spectrum of cells, including uh, blood cells, liver cells. I'm going to talk a little bit about pancreatic cells. Derek also didn't tell you, he loves embryonic stem cells as well, making nervous system cells, heart cells, skeletal muscle, bone, and blood vessels. So, it's there. We can do all of these things. As Derek pointed out, the, the key this to, to, to making this work is understanding how you tell the cell to do what you want it to do. And if you get that right, you have a wonderful uh, dish full of cells. And I'm going to show you a few examples of how we do this. I'm going to show you examples of how we could make insulin producing cells from human embryonic stem cells. Uh, this is my favorite slide. It's not a pancreatic cell, but it, it kind of, I think, validates us as a, as a lab that can do something at least. You can at least believe that these are interesting cells. What these are are human heart cells. And I always show this slide, and Derek good, uh, makes fun of me a little bit. This is the best slide we have. This is human heart cells made from human embryonic stem cells. And we have developed ways to do this all the time, every day, and reproducibly. So it allows us to make large numbers of these cells to distribute to our colleagues within the Mucun Center and actually around the world. We've sent these around the world for colleagues to test in their various systems. 
Now, we're not talking about heart tonight, but these very same cells that can make heart cells can make also very interesting other types of cells. And so, this is a very simplistic diagram of how we do this. I was actually looking for a picture of a witch's brew to stick in the front here because in many ways when you first engage on such a project, you're not quite sure how to do it. But what these symbols represent is adding different specific molecules to the culture dishes at precise times that allow us to move the system from an embryonic stem cell, in this case not a heart cell, but an insulin producing cell. And this is work by uh, Christina Nostra, a postdoctoral fellow in my lab. I think she's here this evening, or she might have left already. And Farida Sarangi. And Christine is a recipient of a JDR fellowship, so it's quite appropriate that I can show some of her work. Uh, so it's absolutely key. And, and these symbols are actually not just pulled out of a hat. We gain this information from an understanding of how different animal systems, uh, organisms make insulin producing cells. And so we sift through the literature, people have studied this in various animal models, and that information coalesces and allows us then to try and direct these wonderful cells to an insulin producing cell. So I'm going to show you some very, very, very new data from our lab. And what you see here, and why I showed you the heart cell is you can see it beating and it's really cool. What we're looking at here is a stain that is detecting those cells that are making insulin. This is from human embryonic stem cells, the very same stem cells that we coaxed in one hand to make heart cells, the very same stem cells will make these. So in this dish you can see each one of those uh, orange cells is a cell that's making human insulin made from a human embryonic stem cell. So the quest for making these cells is, is essentially over. We can make them. So we now have to do a number of important things with them. And I'm going to uh, review what we're going to do. And I have a slightly higher picture that even shows it more, more, more uh, up close. Not every cell in the culture is doing it. We have about anywhere from 2 to 3 percent. But we have the end result. And now it's a matter of technology to improve it. So the point here is that we can make human insulin producing cells from human embryonic stem cells. We can do it all, you know, every experiment. We have the conditions down so we know what we're, we're, at least we're driving them to this stage. Are they functional? That remains to be determined. Do they respond to glucose? We don't know. But nevertheless, the, the, I think the, the big hurdle of kind of looking for different things to make them is behind us, and now I think we can do some very, very exciting experiments. That's embryonic stem cells. Several years ago, a researcher in Japan, in Japan published a study that basically revolutionized stem cell biology. And the essence of that study is on this slide. There's a hand there where someone's taking a skin biopsy. That could be anyone's hand in this room, absolutely anyone. What he showed early on was originally in mouse, but I'm going to just talk about the human because it, it, it has been reproduced in human. You can take a type of cell from the skin biopsy known as a fibroblast. It's kind of a connective cell. And you can introduce into it four genes. Those genes are genes that keep embryonic stem cells as embryonic stem cells. Those genes are transiently put into these stem cells, into these fibroblasts, and it tells the fibroblasts, and this is remarkable, no one believed that this was going to work when we first heard him talk. No one in the world believed this could work. It takes the fibroblast and turns it back into an embryonic stem cell. So if you think about that for a minute, you have basically turned back time on that small group of cells from your skin you now are sitting with your own embryonic stem cell in a dish, if you want, which can make any of the cell types that I showed you. So we can make heart cells from anyone in this room. We can make insulin-producing cells from anyone in this room. That's what this tells you.